My name's Diana Roberts and I'm the Royal College of Music's Creative Career Centre Manager and I'm delighted to be joined by Angela Beeching today who is a presenter, lecturer and author. Angela, lovely that you could join us. Thank you very so much. So it would be really fantastic if you could start by giving us an overview of your career. Sure, I'm happy to. I started out as a cellist and I never dreamed that I would end up being a music career specialist because when I was in school all I wanted to do was play the cello. I didn't care about anything else so I, I got all the degrees that are possible in the US and uh, my dream was to get a university teaching job which I actually did in two different schools and then I found out it wasn't quite for me. And the good news was that when I was in grad school, I had complained to the, to the department saying they didn't have a career center. And I thought that musicians needed something special. And they said, write us a proposal. And I wrote a proposal. And they said, we're going to make this your teaching assistantship. So I got to start that as a grad student <coughs> at Stony Brook University in New York. Um, and I never thought that it would end up being my career. But when I got tired of the teaching, the cello teaching, and I moved back to Boston, I ended up getting this job at New England Conservatory. And I found that I really love helping musicians make their own path in the world. And that's really been the focus. I did that work at New England Conservatory and at Indiana University, and more recently at Manhattan School of Music, and now as a freelance consultant, which is great. Great, so we'd love to hear about your books. You've written two and a third one on the way. Yeah. Are you able to give us a little bit of background as to the context of the books? Sure. I only wrote this book out of, out of frustration. So um, originally in 2005, I wrote a book called Beyond Talent because the work I was doing at New England Conservatory, I couldn't find a book that really um, included what, what students were asking for in one volume, the kinds of questions that were coming up about careers, about managing time, managing money, managing stress, how to book your own concerts, how to, how to get funding for projects. Um, so I ended up writing a book, and I, that again surprised me, but it was a matter of there was a need, my need and other people's needs, and, and that was fun. Um, this kind of information goes out of date so fast that you need to update it. So in 2010, I did, this is the most recent version, uh, and I'm working on the third edition now. And it's exciting to be researching examples and um, finding out the most inspiring things that musicians are up to these days. Great. Um, and thinking about your own career, um, what has been the biggest risk that you have taken so far? Well, I'm just making me think the latest risk. <laughs> it's funny to be coaching music entrepreneurs and then to finally take your own advice and to, and to go out and start your own business. And it's exciting and a wonderful creative challenge. So that I think that's maybe my most latest my latest creative uh, risk. And, and uh, running your own business, of course, um, has sort of emotional roller coaster aspects to it. And, and I think I'm better able to help freelance musicians because of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So obviously, Angela, you've worked with so many students along the way. Are you able to share with us a story that's most inspired you? Well. One of the things that does surprise me in the work and inspires me is when, I, when I've worked with young musicians when they're in school, sometimes there are people who you're thinking, oh, they, they are not the profile of someone who's going to get out there and take a leadership role in their own career. Um, they're maybe very focused on just taking auditions and, and sort of going along the traditional path. And yet, some of these people, when they have an idea, you know, they, it sort of lights them up. And they've got a fire in their belly to either create their own festival or their own ensemble and to launch this thing. And we need musicians who will do this. Um, 
this is really the future. And every time a musician surprises me, which is quite frequently, it's, it's just a wonderful thing to see them come into their own and take full uh, creative responsibility for their future. So obviously there are a number of skills that uh, musicians need to have in order to build a successful career. Networking is a really key aspect. Are you able to share with us your top tips with regards to networking? Most musicians, at least in the States, hate this term. Um, I'm imagining it's not just in the yeah. States. <laughs> People often equate this with kind of political manipulative behavior that you're wanting something from somebody else and it doesn't feel genuine or authentic. And my goal is to really help people understand networking as making friends and just being curious about other people and willing to share the way we all do as, as humans. But um, when people feel like, oh, I'm supposed to be networking, suddenly it's a business transaction and, and everyone gets uncomfortable. And often, we're not acting from our most genuine, real place. So the, the best tip that I say to people for starting this whole process is, instead of thinking about connecting with someone in, a, in an influential power situation and trying to get something from them, instead I say, think about three people that you've kind of lost track of. They might be a former teacher, a former mentor, a former colleague. Maybe you played together at a master class or festival in the past and you kind of don't know where they are. And, and staying Facebook friends doesn't count. So <laughs> to really connect with these people and have a conversation, um, everybody needs a small circle of kind of your inner circle of mentors. And if you don't cultivate those relationships, those people, you know, we just drop off each other's radar screens. So I often say to people, start with three people that you want to reconnect with, have good conversation, be interested in, the, in them, and see what develops from that. But also ask them, who do they know that they think could be useful for you to have another conversation with it. Having a conversation is not asking for money or a job or an audition. It's, it's, it's getting advice. So I think that's not bad to, to start with those three. Okay, so from networking, thinking very much about the entrepreneurial mindset. Mm -hmm. um, it's um, a, a big uh, topic. Um, has been for a number of years now about the musician not just being uh, a performer but being an entrepreneur. What would be your advice with regards to musicians starting to think of themselves mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. developing their entrepreneurial mindset? Well, that's another word that a lot of people don't like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I can understand that. It, it can feel like, oh, I'm an artist, I'm, I'm focused on making music. I don't want to make a business. And again, I would say um, my experience is that every creative person, every musician, every artist of any type has typically a secret project, something in the back of their mind that they've always wanted to do. Um, for me, it was studying in Paris. It was something I you know, I just thought, oh, this is a dream. This is never going to happen. And if it weren't for a couple of friends when I was in graduate school who kind of kicked my butt and, you know, said, quit talking about this, do something about it, uh, I, would never have, I would never have applied for a grant. I would have never gone forward. So <clears throat> what, I, what I try to do is help people articulate what is that project because very often that's the key to making something happen in your career. And I've found people have really inspiring projects, but they're afraid to say them because they don't think it's possible. They don't think they have enough time or money or knowledge or contacts. And having the guts to admit it to yourself, this is something I would like to do, and then starting to talk to people is the start of finding resources to make it happen. So if the word is troublesome, 
then maybe we can just talk about this in terms of projects because that's how all careers are are built project to project and usually it's the it's the inspiration or the energy that comes from that first project and the context that leads to the next. Something that we're going to be talking about a lot actually through the Creative Career Centre is branding and um, identifying your unique selling point. Mm. What are your top tips for a musician creating their own niche in the world? The branding and the, and the niche creation or or identifying that niche, I think those things really do go together and they need to start from this authentic place. Who am I? Not an easy um, question to answer for most people. And when, when musicians are working on their bios <clears throat> or on their website or on their social uh, media platform profiles, these questions always come up and I find that Musicians feel like they have to list all of their most impressive stuff and then their self-esteem takes a beating because we all feel like, oh, I don't have enough impressive things to say here or it's not the right hall or I haven't, I haven't performed with a prestigious conductor at this point. Um, and I always say, if we keep talking and, and talk about what you're really interested in and some of the more unusual projects that you've been a part of or unusual repertoire that you've played, that's when you start to get a sense of what makes this person tick. And you stop comparing yourself to other people, but really say what's at the heart, like why are you a musician? And when I read a bio that really speaks directly to that motivation, the kind of why behind someone's work, that's when they start to become memorable and that's when you start to hear a direction that they could be moving in. And again, that leads to conversations. So I, I think it's actually a very hopeful thing that that process of working on your promotion materials usually starts with getting depressed. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can get real about who you are. And often, I'm sure you have this, this experience with, with students and alumni too, when you're talking to them and you start to hear about the interesting stuff and you reflect on it, this can tell me more about this. Mm. They're sort of surprised. Mm. And then they feel, oh, well, maybe my background is not anything to mm. be embarrassed mm. about. Like, there is some really good stuff here. Mm. So I love it that people come out of this process feeling more confident and more ready to take on the world because that's what you need. You need that energy. So Angela, you mentioned your online presence. Which platforms do you use and which ones would you recommend? Um, well, I have a website and I write a weekly blog called Monday Bites. It's a bad pun, but that's the name and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> so it has um, short uh, uh, advice for musicians on career tips. And having some regular way to reach out to your fans is an important thing. Not everybody is going to be using email or as their, as their poison of choice. So um, you might want to also offer a version of whatever you're sending out, whether it's a newsletter or a blog or um, just a regular update. So having a Facebook fan page, um, using Twitter, if, if your fans are on Instagram, you want to be there too. And the habits of these different platforms are quite specific. And the best way to interact with people, of course, is not sort of shoving your message down their throats. It's not to say, buy my CD, come to my concert, come to my concert, come to my concert, which is too often what, what we're all doing. Mm -hmm. So if it's a real conversation, and you, you're growing a fan base that way, that's, that's what makes a difference. It, it's kind of like saying, um, who is the you that you want to be online? How, how do you want to come across? What, what is the image? And if you're tempted to complain about uh, your string quartet partners or <laughs> Your, your funding or your conductor, I would say do not do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
So instead, um, be very uh, cognizant of the fact that, that you're speaking, you want to be speaking from your best place, and that this is how people are interacting with you, and, and who, are, who they're getting to know is you. Great. Um, and one final last question. What does success mean to you? Ah. <clears throat> That's a tough question. I just came from a conference in Vienna, and it was all focused on uh, music business research. But in the end, we had several conversations that focused on this, because every creative person needs to define success for him or herself. It's, it's easy, especially if you start playing an instrument when you're three or five or seven. Um, it's easy to be starstruck and have one specific idea. Um, in the States, if you're a singer, it's to sing at the Met, right? So um, as we grow up, though, and as we start to explore what are possibilities, often in the back of our minds, that our, our sense of, of options and our interest areas are often expanded. But you need to update that picture in your head of what is success, that picture and that definition. And what I find is people, if you ask them what does success in terms of their career or life mean when they're 20 or when they're 30, when they're 40, these things change over time because people want a different kind of balance to their life. And in the end, what I, what I often find that this comes down to is that people want to live a meaningful life. And for musicians, this is really about making an impact and making a difference in the world, music being of service. It doesn't mean that you're, that you're playing for free. It means that y you are contributing something valuable to, to the world, and you have a sense of that. Uh, that's where the meaning comes in, and I think it's so important. It's very easy when we're talking about career issues and when musicians are wanting to build their careers, it's easy to focus on the trappings of success. You know, winning a competition, being named first chair in a section, and to lose sight of the fact that we're doing this for a reason beyond ourselves. And I think that's a, a, a good thing to tune back in. Why, why are we making music? It's a wonderful art. Thank you so much for joining us today, Angela, and sharing your wise words of wisdom with regards to career development for musicians. So if you want to find out more information about any of the topics discussed today, please do come and see us in the Creative Career Centre.